Alrighty guys, welcome back to another episode of Life with Kyle and today is going to be another investing segment. Uh, we're coming up here at the end of the week, end of the equities market, closing on Friday, not open for the weekend. So we're going to be taking a look at some stuff that's come up throughout this week. Uh, we've got a lot of things we're going to cover today. So it looks like I'll be uploading more of these investing segment videos uh, midweek around Wednesday just to discuss things that have happened, have come up so far. Uh, Friday is going to be discussing stuff that we've seen come up in the market and new news that has uh, appeared throughout the week. And then of course Sunday, when pre-market comes up after the weekend, a lot of stuff can happen and the markets aren't reacting yet, so we're gonna take a look at those as well. So it looks like it'll kind of be uh, Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday that we're gonna be uploading a lot of these videos in the investing segment side of things. So uh, without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and jump right into it. We've got a couple things we're gonna cover today. Gonna to be uh, looking at something with the S&P 500 and the equities market. Our uh, Federal Reserve friends have been uh, up to no good, it seems, when it comes to you know fudging that market up. But uh, we we'll look at that. Going to look at uh, some other things here. The jobless claims have come out for the month of April, which has been astronomically high. So that's going to be a showing. And we're also going to take a look at the global unemployment as well and correlate that with some of the GDP that we're expecting in the future. We're also going to be taking a look at the S&P 500. That's what I uh, like to use when it comes to a lot of how the American economy is doing as a whole. That's what a lot of majority of the uh, actual exchanges are traded on that I like to indicate and use. So we'll look at that, look at some indicators I've been using to trade that as well. Some things I've noticed and some things that are appearing uh, that might be a little bit interesting to you guys. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Put together enormous, enormous rescue package, uh, cash, liquidity, Federal Reserve, uh, payroll protection. It's a remarkable thing. I was actually adding it up. It's about $9 trillion now. Uh, including the Federal Reserve and uh, what we've done on fiscal policy in the budget. Some of this may have worked. We may have cushioned the, the decline. That may be part of the story inside these very, very difficult numbers. So we'll start by talking about the S&P 500 forward P&E versus Federal Reserve assets. So basically, this is the S&P 500 price to earnings uh, relative to the Federal Reserve's assets. And if we look at this, we will see that as the stock began to decline when the coronavirus hit, Federal Reserve assets were relatively stable in conjunction with the uh, spike in the economy. You can see as their reserve assets picked up, this was back in 2019 when the Fed indicated that they were going to lower interest rates and begin increasing their purchase of assets. But now their asset purchasing has gone through the roof. And if you look closely, there seems to be a correlation there with the market skyrocketing as it has. If you look as the Federal Reserve assets kind of purchase goes sideways, not really increasing anymore, but it's just stagnant. Uh, the S&P 500 fluctuates immensely, dropping at some points, uh, great values, and then going back up, but they have to keep pumping money into it. So what happens when the Federal Reserve stops pumping money into this market? Clearly, if they leave it stable, it goes astronomically crazy up and down all over the place, but what happens when they stop pumping money into it? Do they just always put in the $7 million that they're just going to have the whole time. So this chart's a great example of the question that's going to be asked by everyone of what happens when the Federal Reserve either A, runs out of money, or B, just stops putting money into it at all. I feel like this is going to be a never-ending cycle where they're going to always have to continue to put money into this market in order to keep it inflated. This should be an enormous red flag to every investor out there, but for some reason, people just don't want to care. So I like to look at this and think of it as more or less the S&P 500 uh, printer to earnings ratio because clearly the more money the Fed can print, the higher the stock market's going to go. So uh, this is a great chart, but this always leaves people asking the question. You get immense job loss numbers, which we'll get into shortly, but uh, it always leaves people asking questions like this. On the S&P 500 stock twits, which is basically like Twitter for stocks, uh, a user asked 14% unemployment rate and the market is green. Do people realize how bad the economy is? And clearly this, this man is indicating that it is bearish. Well, the response is basically in the comment section. You scroll down a little bit, the guy says no. You see this. Unreal says, don't matter when Fed printer go brr, LOL. That's pretty much the most accurate description I've, I've read all day. If there's any reason for the stock market to go up, it's because the Federal Reserve's printer just goes brr. Makes complete sense. So when the stock market goes down, you figure Jay Powell out there needs to rev up that printer. He probably slept in, couldn't get the money out, but this is it. This is, this is exactly why the market's going up. I, I don't understand a better way to explain it. The printer, everything's printing money. You just keep buying stuff. It will not fall, but it's not sustainable. So today... Dow jumps more than 300 points even after record job losses as investors bet the worst has passed. No investor in their right mind is betting the worst has passed right now. 
Clearly, the chart we showed earlier indicates that the only reason this market goes up is because the Federal Reserve is buying every single asset under the belt. The government is buying every single stock at an immensely cheap value just so they can get a seat at the board. So this is just in America. Right here, Labor Department said that a record 20.5 million jobs were lost last month. Adding the unemployment rate jumped to 14.7% from just 4.4%. Both the spike in job losses and the unemployment rate surged our post-World War II records. World War II, guys. This is astronomical. To be sure, neither print was as bad as feared. I doubt that. Economists polled by Dow Jones expected a loss of 21.5 million jobs and an unemployment rate of 16%. Get the f*** out of here. I don't know what kind of jack-off e economists they were freaking polling. These guys don't know jack about the freaking economy. This makes no sense. Nobody, the, the unemployment rate should not be this low within one month. Should not. And if this historic jobs locks figure reported for April, total non-firm payrolls changed from previous month since 1939. If this does not scare you, if this does not spark fear in you, you're clearly not a, a passive investor. You're just aggressive. You're gambling. You're just betting the market on what you want to do, what you hope to do, try to get some money just on a quick flip. This, is, this isn't something that can be fixed like a switch. The economy cannot be turned on like a flick of the switch. That's not how this works. There's a reason. One, just in my state alone in Florida, one out of every four people that have applied for unemployment are getting approved. That is crazy because the government cannot pay for this. And so they're just going to be like, hey, in the beginning, they were going to say, hey, apply for this, furlough your workers, tell them it's furloughment, tell them to get on unemployment, we'll pay them, blah, 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 all this and that. And then they're not going to get on it. They're not going to get any money. Everybody's going to lose all this money right now. The company's going to take out these PPP loans. And so people just sit there and do that. And look, breaking news right now, as I'm recording this, Alphabet CEO, Google, an internal memo, offices reopening at 10 to 15% capacity starting in June. June. 10 to 15 percent capacity you have 85 percent more people that are just sitting there what are they going to do no way 85 percent of the people can work from home no way they're going to continue to pay those 85 percent of the people so yeah looks like jobs are going to be coming back just fine there this is crazy just absolutely crazy you have investors that seem to be able to look through the tsunami of negative economic data and earnings and towards the potential for a gradual reopening of the economy woohoo but hey 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 uh, let's say this here, guys. Not everything is as bad as it seems, right? Clearly, we got some job gains in a couple sectors, and we also have some uh, decreases in jobs in certain other sectors. But let's look. Monetary Authority Central Bank. Okay, we got 0.51% increase in jobs. That's great. Uh, computer Peripheral Equipment Manufacturing, 0.4% uh, increase. Uh, couriers and Messengers, 0.2%. Other Information Services, 0.14%. U.S. Postal Services, 0.08%. Wait, wait. These are government-related jobs, and half of these are banks. Uh, and they're not even increasing nearly enough to cover the uh, personal and laundry services of negative 52%, arts, entertainment, and recreation of negative 54%, clothing and clothing, accessory stores of negative 58%, negative 59%, negative 60%. That doesn't make any sense. Hold on, hold on. We got companies filing for bankruptcy. J. Crew already filed for bankruptcy. Neiman Marcus just filed for bankruptcy. It looks like JCPenney stock is going to be filing for bankruptcy. And Hertz might be filing for bankruptcy. So... Yeah, I mean, if I'm listening to the news, if I'm listening to, you know, what everybody's telling me, I think these, these jobs will come back when the economy reopens. But yeah, yeah, I think they're going to come back. Give me a freaking break, guys. This, this isn't a joke right now. This isn't anything. People, the government's main role in this is controlling the economy, controlling the consumer, controlling rational fear so people don't go berserk. So you know how they do that? They make everything seem all fine and dandy. One of the biggest things my father told me when he was trading is that they always tell you it's coming back. They say, hey, it's coming back. It's coming back. We're coming back stronger than ever. Keep your money in here. It's going to bounce back. And then boom, company he had went bankrupt, lost it all. So I've learned from his mistakes. He's wise. He's done this. He's been done this. And he has not got back in the market until he knows the time is right. And so I've been leaning on that. I've been heeding his wisdom because he's done this longer than I have. And this just this isn't just in America, guys. This is a global impact. China struggles with sharp rise in unemployment. This article alone, China is struggling to cope with the rise of unemployment in the wake of a coronavirus pandemic with payment of benefits stalling and questions being raised about the real number of job losses in the country. 
That is insane. The Ministry of Human Resources and Social Security said last week that 2.3 million people received jobless benefits in the first quarter this year, the same as the previous quarter, yet the nation's official unemployment rate rose to 5.9% or 26 million in March from 5.2% or 23 million in December. That's not normal. Granted, this article was posted on April 22nd of 2020, so you know, a few weeks behind there, but okay, let's go take a look at Europe. This was even older, March 31st, 2020. Coronavirus in Europe, 1 million job losses in two weeks is tip of the iceberg. Well, clearly this article was wrong because their job losses have exponentially grown since then. So guys, this isn't just focused here in America. America's obviously, like we saw in the last chart, America's GDP is revolved over 100% around our equities market. So we can't let it go. We've got too much money invested in the equities market for us to lose any more than we would like. So what does this correlate to? All these job loss claims, okay, yeah, people are going to struggle. Of course, companies aren't going to be able to do as well. What's the point of all this? Economists are forecasting that our GDP in 2021, or even by the end of this quarter in 2020, quarter four, is going to increase. When we do reopen, that is going to give this economy a tremendous boost. And we will see that uh, in the summer and autumn quarters and spilling into 2021. 2021 could be a fabulous year if we keep the right policies in place. Our exports are going to increase. We're going to be increasing through GDP. Well, yeah, probably our GDP will increase as economies and like stores begin to reopen. But how are our exports going to increase if every single country in the world is struggling just like this and none of them have money? Who's going to buy anything? And another big trade factor that's coming up for these tech stocks that have apparently already wiped out the losses they have from 2020 and are now on a 1% increase. There is a trade war coming out that was supposed to take care of last September in 2019, but is now still negotiating with Beijing and the United States. President Trump has threatened them to uphold their end of the bargain. And if they don't, there's going to be massive amounts of retaliation and not to announce the fact that there may be retaliation, rather it's war, rather it's more payments. Trump is coming out every day more and more and stating that China will pay reparations for the coronavirus. He is blaming them 100% saying this was their fault and they will pay. You know what that reminds me of? Not to be cynical here, but last time something like that happened, World War II broke out when Hitler blamed Jews for everything wrong with their economy post-World War I and their depression. I don't know about you guys, but that's just very, that's scary to me. And if that doesn't open your eyes, I don't know what's gonna. Alrighty guys, so the last thing I want to look at is uh, some indicators here on the S&P 500 index that we use, the ETF. Uh, again, we kind of broke through this resistance barrier, but we had before, we're going to see if this is sustainable, if it will keep going up, or if it already tests these lows. Our MACD, again, ever since we've had these massive spikes, has still been indicating more selling relative to how much buying we've had. RSIs remain neutral, not really been increasing at all. And our stochastic indicator of momentum has been still downtrending. So we're going to be monitoring this. Uh, these dead cap bounces are going to give way unless our friends at the Federal Reserve, our buddy Jay Powell, can rev up those printers going brr and give us some more money to rocket these markets into new highs. I doubt we have the money for that right now, given that our GDP, our exports, imports are astronomically lower than they've ever been. They've shrunk to the lowest levels of all, as we saw uh, in the post video where we were talking about our lending standards versus policy rates. Our GDP was immensely low, but these indicators, they're still giving me red flags. This isn't something I would want to buy into. Even if I miss out on dollars, I don't care. I do not trust, I do not invest when markets look like this. These are thoughts running through my head. Again, this is not investing advice. Disclaimer there. This is just me vibing to you guys what I see in the market and what I talk about. This is what I, when I read stuff like this, this is literally how I'm thinking. My emotion, you can, you can hear the emotion in my voice because I am that passionate about this. And I don't like seeing other people get robbed like this. I just do not. When this goes and everybody loses everything in their 401k that they've had in the market, that is going to cause massive issues for everyone across the board. So be mindful of this, guys. This was a quick little segment post week of the market. Uh, obviously, ending the market on a green note looks like we've kind of got some uptrend. But again, our boys at the Fed have been hard at work putting some money out, getting the money through them printers. So let's see how long we can continue this, guys. I think next week's going to be a little bit more hectic, probably more of a red week. Looks like we might have some downtrend to kind of get us back in these zones that we've been trending in for the past month now. 
But uh, we'll watch this and uh, we'll reconvene Sunday night, see what the pre-market's looking like, and we'll go from there, guys. Stay safe as always. Have a great weekend, and we will talk Sunday.